with his fourth AOI title, um, separating himself from Clark Winlet and Andy Morgan. And at this time, I want to introduce to you, he is the reigning 2019 FLW Tour Angler of the Year. He is part of the Polaris Pro Team. Let's hear it for Mr. David Dudley. Guys, I got him. I got him. Can you believe it? It's finally happening. This trip's been in the works for 18 years. Well, maybe 18 in one month, I think, is how we started talking about it. So. I'm, I'm Jack. I don't know about Joe, but I've been posting this all over social media. Normally, I don't post a lot about extra adventures I do, but when you get a chance to go with the legend in Maine, I think he's the governor. He might become the president. I don't know what he's going to do, but I knew if I was ever going to go ice fishing, I said, if I'm ever going to do it, and I've said I'm not going to do it, but watching Joe's videos gets me excited about fishing on the ice, which sounds weird. I said I'd never do it. I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with the man Joe. So he is breaking me. He, I am a virgin right now in the ice fishing world, and Joe gets to you know, experience the, the outcoming of the virgin of ice fishing. What do you think about that, Joe? <laughs> well, that's your intro, guys. This is the secret I've been keeping for, uh, for the whole trip so far. This is the one and only, the legend of the bass fishing and the outdoor world, Mr. David Dudley. There I don't is. know about that introduction, but nah, yeah. He's, he's a humble fella. He's a humble fella. But, but we are going to have some fun anytime me and joe got together when he was on tour we always laughed we always had a great time and i know it's going to be about the same now yeah. i'm sure there's going to be some mess ups with me on the ice i no. guarantee you no. i'm going to do something crazy and that's stupid but uh hey my challenge is for this for this for this uh, uh series of show is to get joe to jump in <laughs> to the cold water if we can find water somewhere the ice bath challenge yes you guys comment below who wants to see the legend of maine jump in i ain't gonna say naked but jump in <laughs> the ice up here in Maine, who wants to see? Comment below because the pressure is on you, Joe. The pressure. <laughs> well, are you, on gonna, you are you gonna do it? Oh, I, I I'll do it. I'll do it. I know you'll do it. I, I, here's the thing: I brought a nice saw too, so we can cut a nice big hole. <laughs> well, now you got me a little nervous. <laughs> he he's actually got the tools to make it happen. I always got the tools. <laughs> all right, you just got to tie a rope to me. Is all I got to tell you. You got to tie a rope to me because. If I jump down, I, I don't want to be going down forever. So, ice bath challenge. So there he is, guys. As you can tell, it's not a Maine or New England accent. David came a long way to get up here. Flight got canceled yesterday. Had to move the first flight around a little bit before that. It's just been a super challenge getting him up here because of the weather and, and fitting it into his tight schedule, too. He's got a pretty... Pretty important season coming right up too, I, I believe, right? Yeah, we are about to start the season in two weeks and I don't have anything ready. I've been focused about this ice fishing. I think I've prepped <laughs> my mind more about this trip with Joe Holland than I have prepping my mind for the Bass Pro Tour of MLF. Oh no, uh -huh. so if he has a bad season, guys, you know whose fault it is. <laughs> but stay tuned to this series, I think you're really gonna appreciate it. We had a blast on tour together. David took me under his wing right away. You know, here's, here's a uh, true champion in all the regards at the very top of the game. And I'm coming in as a rookie, you know, uh, wet behind the neck and green behind the ears, as they say in some places and took me right in, you know, no big timing or anything like that. So, so I really appreciate everything he's done for me. And he said he had an inkling to go ice fishing. I said, well, I can, I can make that happen for you. So stay tuned to this series guys, cause there's going to be a lot of stories, a lot of inside stories that you might not hear in the papers. You might not hear them on TV. And, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll have some really fun, a lot of fun times. Thanks for tuning in so far. We'll see you when we get up North. Here we are at the last stop before we hit the Outback. And you guys saw me in the beginning of the show and told you I said I ordered some 
FXR. I want people who know what it's like to live in the outback and keep you warm. And look a here. What'd you look a here? FXR, FXR, FXR. Yeah, I have a good inkling, and I'm not going to go cold in this uh, adventure. But looking at these rods, come on now. Look at that ice fishing rods. I don't know if I'm going to be used to the, this kind of little micro fishing stuff but this is the end of the Appalachian Trail right here. all right so we're at the end of the Appalachian Trail this is like legit when you are done doing the Appalachian Trail this is where you end up at I can't believe probably how many people have raised their hands up yeah. with an accomplishment that is like that's something to be proud of I know a lot of people that do the Appalachian Trail do a lot of hiking but that would be pretty cool. Is it, is it actually right here? Yep, it's yep. right here. This is the west branch of the Penobscot River. Where so we're going to be ice fishing. We're going to be like Jesus on water, walking we're on water. We're past that mountain. See that mountain? Okay, That's we're past we're that and mountain. Katahdin, if you look at that. Katahdin is right there. Yes. I thought you said, Joe, I thought you said there was ice out here. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're light. <laughs> Joe. There come, ain't much. Come on. I mean, I can stand at the bank and throw out on the bank. This is supposed to be ice fishing. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit of a tough year for ice. We're going to have to pray hard that Jesus will make us walk on water. Bring your own Bring your own ice. Okay. So that's Depths in the Wilderness. And there's an ice cave there that there's ice in the middle of summer, 4th of July. August, September, there's caves that are still covered in ice in the middle of summer. Mm. Yep, there's some pretty cool lakes in there. I bet the people back in the day who knew of that cave would take their meat oh, deer. from the... Oh, look! We got deer! We got deer! Is it moose? Deer. That's a rare sight up here in northern Maine. Well, deer. is it moose or whitetail? It, well, it. It's whitetail. Oh, look at them nanny goats. thought we were going to be looking at darn mooses. <laughs> Joe over there talking deer, white-tailed deer language. <laughs> he talking, he talking language. They, so they yard here. I don't know if you guys have that where you live, but they, they leave their territory where they spend their whole year and they go to what we have called wintering yards where it's like all spruce, cedar, fir trees. They get a huge canopy so there's less snow underneath and it gives them something to eat. Otherwise, the snow gets four, five, six, seven foot deep and they, they can't survive in the winter unless they're in a wintering yard. So at this time of year, the deer all get together. They hate each other's guts, all the big bucks, you know, during the rot, before the rot, pre-rot. But now they're like best friends. Those two little guys there are best friends now to try to make it through the winter. And as long as the coyotes don't get in the deer yards or the loggers cutting down the trees, those deer will make it survive the worst of winters, you know, staying in the yard. So really cool. There's a lynx right there. A lynx. You know how rare that is to see a lynx? A lynx right there. There's two of them. Look at him looking at us. That is so freaking cool. He's going to let us get right up to it. Oh, that's cool. Speed up. See if you can get him. I see, the, I see the foot traps. See well, I see where they went, but that is so cool. That's my first lynx I've ever seen in my life. And it, oh, look, there he is. Hey, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. He's 10 feet from us and don't care. That crazy dog. Isn't that so cool? How's that, baby? Oh, my gosh. That is like the coolest thing ever. Look, there's the other one. Oh, look at that. Did you get a good picture of it? Hey, 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 go right there. Look, okay, just, they're kidding. Drop our kids. Did you get a good picture of it? Yeah. Video. Yeah. 
just staring at us like we're not even here. They got a rabbit around here somewhere. Right. They all need a wascally wabbit. There's a wascally wabbit around here. They got a rabbit around here somewhere. This is crazy. So, so for the viewers at home, what was, I want to just ask you, what was I just telling you? Literally. 10 seconds before that happened. Okay, so you see this curve in the road, right around that curve. He was telling me about a lynx that he trapped years ago and, it, and you wasn't allowed to trap lynx because they are a protected animal. And sure enough, as soon as we turn that curve, he goes, look, there's two lynx in the road, like 10 seconds down the road. And what's cool about it is this, the story that he was telling was him letting the lynx go, and that could have been generational yeah. uh, lynx from my man Joe Holland. <laughs> it could be the grandkids. That is so cool. So that's a federally threatened species. They primarily only feed on snowshoe hare, and snowshoe hare have like 10 year cycles, so they go up and down, so it's pretty low year on rabbit right now, so they could be having a hard time, but the cool yeah. thing to see, like one really cool thing about a, Look. a lynx is, so like a an adult lynx foot will be over six inches. So those were those were both kittens, but that's uh. still like four and a half inches. And they have fur in them, and their pads are wide, so they could be on top of the lightest. Like see that? Those are all rabbit tracks. Oh, see those rabbit yeah. tracks? So they either just killed that joker or they're hunting them. Uh -huh. And like look at all the rabbit tracks. Oh, right they there. right there around the wathcally wabbit. Yeah. But those are lynx tracks there. Lynx tracks there. Those are nice ones. And then. And the difference, like the biggest, easiest way to tell them apart is from a bobcat is they have longer ear tufts, like a lot longer. And their tail looks like you dipped them in a bucket of paint, black paint. Whereas a bobcat's is black on the top, but it's got white on the bottom. Whereas a lynx is black and tight, just like you dipped it. So those are like super I, nice. I, I was, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I, I just, I didn't know But yeah, know so there were three that. here, because look, there's a set of tracks there, there, and we had one over there. So there were a minimum of three here, and they're all over this rabbit in here. And all because my man turned loose the lynx from years ago from him trapping. My first lynx ever I caught. Right That's there. so cool. It's like, whatever. Ten seconds up the road, he was telling me that story. We turn around. It just shows. Follow the rules, guys. Follow the rules, and you'll have sights like this. All right. So here's a logging truck that these logging roads are made for, and he's coming out with a huge load. Not as huge as Joe was telling me. Joe, was that was that a huge truck or no? Kind of? That that one was road legal, so he can go down the road with that. But okay. most of them, a lot of them are oversized. They're, they're like 14 or 16 foot wide and 110 foot long, so they're not legal to go on tar roads. 110 foot long going down a road. So and they'll do triples of those. They'll haul three trailers on one on one uh, caboose. Ah, uh, caboose. <laughs> so he's been telling me about these logging roads with logging trucks and how many times uh, he's experienced some scary situations so you always want to give them the most footage on the road that you can give them is what he's telling me yeah. they drive like animals they don't slow down for nothing <laughs> all right david and i are gonna go get a piece of chaga i just bought it off the telos road oh that's pretty deep i'm gonna let him <laughs> I'm gonna let him break trail on this. I don't have my clothes on yet. Here, but I spied a piece of chaga. I want to be quick just in case a log truck comes. But yeah, nice piece of chaga right there, reachable. I didn't. All my axes are back home in the tent or in the snowmobile. But this is a piece of chaga right here. This has the most antioxidants of anything on the planet right there. It's a mushroom, and it's. It's like a parasite to the tree. You know, it lives off the tree and it gets sucked up through the sap root and, and it'll protrude wherever the weakest spot on the tree is and eventually it'll kill that tree. So that's it right there. So, what, you tell, so from what I understand, this is the highest antioxidants in the world. In the world. And what did you say about diabetes? It's been known to either stop diabetes I don't want to say cure it, 
but I've read that. Okay, so you guys know I'm a diabetic. He spotted this fungus going 30 miles an hour down the road. He hits the brake. I said, what are you doing? He spots a piece of fungus with snow on it on the side of the road. And yes, we're getting, as soon as he told me the history behind this with diabetes, I said, we got to go back and get it. So look at that thing. Look at that. So I'm gonna try to knock that off the tree with just a hammer. And I got a claw hammer too. There we go. Oh, watch your head. I should have an ax for this, but. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I thought it was coming in. Even if we get a piece of it, we don't oh, need that. I am so gonna eat this. We're there gonna you. drink it this I week. mean, drink yeah. it. I need my ax, but we'll get that. There we go. There was a piece. Yep. And then the Native Americans used it, but they also use the black is highly flammable. Ooh, so they yeah. used to shave it. So, so we're about to drink something that is highly flammable? Yep. Come on. Yeah, that's what they that use just, for, for fire starters. That just don't make much sense. There it is. Oh. And we'll chop that up. We'll chop that up and drink it. <laughs> But chopping up highly flammable fungus to cure diabetes. I don't know about that. <laughs> he wasn't expecting this on this trip. <laughs> so that chunk right there, all we're going to need is a golf ball off that for this entire trip. The golf ball lasts me a month, so I'll send the rest of that home with David, and he's got a year's uh, Now, good my thing. Buddy, <laughs> oh, my awesome. buddy grinds it up into a powder uh -huh. and runs it in his curry machine. Drinks it every day. Chaga. So it'll, put, it'll put hair on your chest if nothing else <laughs> or on your face <laughs> that's how i got this hey guys all right guys we made it we made it up here we're in the chamberlain parking lot we're all loaded up got the mr david dudley here he's going on his first snowmobile ride ever and look what he's on guys he's on the old slush magnet Three. all i hear is this is just like the man joe the legend this slush magnet is a legend and i get my maiden voyage on the legend i'm looking forward to that i got my maiden voyage on it too a couple of years ago <laughs> she's 370 all sorts of kitty cat power long track Mm -hmm. so we got some serious slush to contend with on a on a serious note so i told him just punch it going into it if you don't make it we'll tell him that's right i hope you got a tow rope we do right. but i think you'll make it just just give, give her some gas feed her the corn before you get there oh, yeah. and then don't let off on her feed her the corn <laughs> yeah. so we're gonna head out now we got like a probably a 20 minute snowmobile ride to get to camp and then we're gonna unload the sled get him all set up in the camp and then we might go out and maybe do a little fishing today. Maybe eat some fish. What do you think, bud? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That Made was it. awesome. <laughs> the view out here is just like breathtaking. Oh, my God. You wait till the sunrise and sunset. It's, oh, my gosh. It's the best I've ever seen in my life. All Didn't right? die. First snowmobile. How'd you ride? Trip. Rode like a Cadillac. <laughs> a Cadillac. Nice. No, <laughs> no trouble in that slush. And there's going to be fish out in that field right oh, there? Oh, yeah. It's just a field, right? Yeah, it's just a field. It's just yeah. a field. Yeah. I'm so used to looking at, uh, you know, like fields of grass. Yeah. I'm not used to looking at this and saying, hey, there's fish right below there. Yep. About, we'll catch some brook trout about 50 feet away, but. How where my buddies are is good lake trout and whitefish. That's pup. blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Uh -huh. All right, this is home sweet home. I'll show you. I'll show you your accommodations for the next week. Yeah. Hopefully they're up to your standards. Oh, whip. <laughs> we call this the Taj Mahal, or maybe the Taj Mahal. You, you could go yellow wherever you want, as you can see but do brown at the end of those footballs, oh, at, at the end of those is, foot is tracks. That, is that the road to the number two area? Yeah, there's some raisins over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's home sweet home. <laughs> Hardwood floor. Nice have? and warm in here. We got, we got uh, chandelier lights up in here. Yep. That's your 
bed right here. All right. And you've got a new pillow, new pillow case. Oh, Actually, you've got a new sleeping bag too, to be honest with you. Yeah. Got a new pillar. We got all kinds of stuff up in here. Insulated. Yeah. That's cool. Insulated. We got a buddy heater. And then here's the kitchen. You're standing in the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah, and then this is all the supplies for the week. A little bit overkill on that, but better to have it and not right. need it than need it and not have it. There you go. I'm excited. Job master on the point. Oh, Holy yeah. crap! Monster jobs. Did I smack him? Terrible. No good. No? Huh. I had one decent Laker over there. That's what they're doing, just grabbing it and going. Lakers, you think, or whiteies? Well, plenty of whiteies over here. Yeah. Huh. Anywhere near bottom? Bourbon. Bourbon. Nice size. Nathan. How's it going? David, that's Brandon, that's Mark. Brandon. Nice to meet you, buddy. David. Mark. Mike. Mark. Mark. That was me and Ray being my first fish I've ever seen caught on the ice right there. I've never fished or nothing. David brought you a present for the camper. They oh. said you boys like to drink, so I've got oh you. Oh my boys. good lord. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know yeah. whose camper that's going to, but. It didn't need to come to eyes last night. I heard Slim had a night. Slim was in, he was in good shape. Really? Jeez, that's gotta be good. <laughs> it wasn't pretty good. That is Slim. Slim been using the bucket? No, he did take a nap for a bit. He did? <laughs> yeah, we had never reached yet. Yeah, Joe, so we, we fished yesterday and then we run in and me and Cameron wanted to How go for doing? a ride. Good, how you doing? Not Slim, bad. my buddy David. Hey Slim. David Slim. Good to meet you. So me and Cameron's like, oh. So I left when you guys were heading we out. We topped off with fuel when you left. Yeah. I have no idea what's in that fuel. We got to like, out off a useless road where that weird Y is, yeah. where we was. And we just stopped for a minute. So Cameron's like, my sled's messed up. Something's wrong, Brandon. I was like, He's like, we gotta we got go back. I was like, all right, we'll head back. And we didn't even get to Webster. I'm like, my sled's messed up. Like I had no power, backfiring, like. Jesus. We get back, we barely made it back. Can't even believe it, it almost died once over by your shack. Cameron's did die once, we made it back. It was six o'clock and I was like, we gotta get to town and get some rigging. So we went back and bought like 10 fuel cans at friggin' track supply, come back. See them. Pumped all the fuel out of his sled, pumped all the fuel out of my sled, then put some, but they still ain't, it ain't great. Really? No, it's not good. So you think it's got Inject is it injectors? Would it be in no, it wouldn't be injectors. What it's is something it? Something in that fuel, that fuel won't burn. You can't get it out? I took it all out, but I mean all you can get out on a siphon hose, the, yeah. the, the tank goes all the way back to the back of them damn things. I know it. Yeah. And you don't know what's in the lines. <laughs> right. We got probably I'd say we got all by about a gallon maybe, and then we put ten gallons of fresh in it. But it was getting better, but I don't know, we'll see. I suppose Cameron, it, I suppose it's water? Going. It's something Diesel? We, we filled Did you go to the diesel pump? No. It's, How much was it? Yeah. $455 no, worth of gas. Non-ethanol fuel. Four fifty. Oh, non-ethanol. But not That not, ain't non-ethanol. 90 some gallons in that tank. I'd be getting a refund. Some I mean 90 gallons of junk. Was your tank junk? No, there is nothing wrong. You can look right in the, the tank. I don't understand it. We we filled milk jug up last night, let it sit overnight. It, I I don't get it. I, I have no idea. Go on it. You do? Take it. Take it. I want to see y'all do it. All right. Oh my God. Oh man. That thing's got a lot of line going. He's come back on it. This got to be a laker, huh? Oh yeah, it was peeling. 
The other one didn't fight. Oh, so right here. Fly. We'll have to go out. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. boy. We got we got to run. Who's that one? There he is. Are you saw us? Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Mountain trout here. Yeah, it's getting a little heavier. No, I'd say definitely wait. Oh, <clears throat> 25 inch rookie man. Come on. That's boss. Bottom mark. Oh, yeah. No, this he didn't like right that. Here. He didn't like the bottom mark. He didn't like it. It's only six pound test, you know. I'd play him. <laughs> <laughs> I got you plenty of slack. Oh boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boys. Oh, no. Let's get a look at you, baby. Get his head up here. Oh, I don't like that one. Oh, <gasps> oh, <yeah. laughs> See how he's letting it have him back? Oh, it's not 80 pound braid. You gotta go real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice laker. Nice laker. Decent laker. Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's keep it. Not as big as my last. Oh Whose is it? Brandon's? Rolling? Just stopped right there. Is this the one that keeps going up on him? Sounds like a white fish. Things have been taking it out. Oh, boy, is that there it? he is. There he is. A white fish. That's a lake white fish right there. Yeah. 16 inches of keeper. That, that'll that's keep. Close. That'll keep. That's, that's good. That's what you call a white fish? Yep, that's a lake white fish. Yep. That's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. Anybody got a tape measure? You want to eat him, Joe? He's bleeding bad. Yeah, you ain't going to make it. Oh my god, is he, is he 16? Yeah, he's 16. Oh, he's, oh yeah. He's 16. Oh yeah. yeah. He's not going to make it. Yeah, he ain't going to make it. Let's keep him. He's delicious. That's good stuff. That's, that's, that's yeah. freshwater haddock right there. Yep. They're good, ain't they? Yep. Mine are right Where the hell? Oh, jeez, I'm looking at the wrong one. Here, hold that baby out. So you just caught Dave and I dinner. Tell us about it. Yeah. Well, she's she's no Wonka, but you, oh, yeah. we'll eat that too. Yeah, that's yeah. an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> Good yeah. fish, bud. Sixteen and a half inch white fish. Keep up for dinner, Joe. Perfect. Thanks, bud. Throw right in the back. The old Chuck Norris chop. Chuck Norris side chop right there. <laughs> Put that on it. Well, I was gonna cut his head off. Or there's two of them looking at. Got him. Yes. Got him. All right, buddy. Got him. Ooh, he this had, might be a laker. He had some competition. That's a coming good fish. In. This might be my first fish, Joe. How's your drag? This could be my first fish, Joe. Oh, it's a. What do we it's got? A, it's a sucker. I got a sucker <laughs> for a sucker catching I a sucker. I don't think I've, I've only seen that once. A sucker catching a sucker. That's crazy. Uh huh. Brandon's gonna use that bait right there for a for a, this is bait for a giant lake trout. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, oh. hold them up. Would you look at there? Mwah. Big size. <laughs> I don't oh. know if I'd do that. Would you look at there? <laughs> I could definitely see the resemblance. Here, hold that baby up. <laughs> would you look at? Would you look at there? Would you look at there? Pretty good size sucker. Mm -hmm. And there were two suckers? Oh! <laughs> Almost a catch and release. Almost a catch and release. Yeah, we'll give that to Brandon for bait. Okay. He'd love that. All right. Oop. He better catch a giant. That's, I think that's the only thing you'll catch on that. But w I reckon th what I was getting at now that we have forward facing sonar. Mm -hmm. What I was doing was confirming what he was doing right. was he's just saying, Hey, I'm over here and they don't care. They would come to him. Yeah. And that's now that I've seen forward facing sonar. So they're a hundred foot 
they don't know really, I mean, they might know my presence, but as soon as I turn the boat and start V-lining right to them, I mean, the whole school's like, hey, let's go check this out. And they come straight wow. to the boat. I got my little tiny bait on. Little oh, they... whitey, little whitey. Oh. Little white fish. These things are great. Look. Oh. They're pretty, but I don't know if this one. They smell like cucumbers. I don't know if you can smell it on this one or not. They might not be big enough to smell. No. Little white fish. Yeah, I got to catch something. Look at that little tiny lure. Wonder bread. Yeah, those are white fish. He cut, oh, I think he bumped me. Yeah, he's interested in you. He's all over me. Yes. Got him here. Yeah. Here, get like, this no, guy. No, you got it. Dude, these things fight hard for as small as they are. Yeah, he come in there like he the man. I might lose him. I'm going to hold him. What do I do? Nothing. I'm just going to hold him. A little better. Jeez, that's almost a keeper. Hey. They, they, they flip out like a tuna. Oh, the hook already popped out? Yeah. Got into you? Sweet. Caught two on one. He would keep if we wanted him, but we got enough fish to eat. And he's not hooked deep, so white fish are kind of fragile. We'll show him to the camera real quick. You can, we want to fish that one? That one? Uh -uh. No, I'm... Nice lake white fish, guys. 16 incher, that's a keeper. Got him on a little Wonder Bread Castmaster Junction. Wonder Bread. Yep. That is a perfect name for that. Right? Isn't, isn't, that, it, isn't that awesome? Yeah. That it that could not be any more perfect than that. Is a wrap for fishing my first experience ice fishing i'm telling you that is the way to go i might actually joe consider moving to maine <laughs> in the winter and i never thought i'd say that but listening to the peace and quiet having the lake all to basically all to ourselves in nature don't get no better than that that's the truth So you're saving the skin off all those fish. Yeah. I'm gonna set this hook right here, okay? Oh, look at that pink meat. Oh, we might have to eat that sushi style. Mm -hmm. So we're saving that? Yeah. Sweet, you save the fins too? Uh, no, we'll trim that off, but we'll make like little chips out of it. Sweet. We won't have many, but. It's all right. We might tomorrow. Yep, true that. Bright orange meat on that lake trout. I mean that brook trout. He had a full belly. I'm curious what he was eating. Oh, look at that big chunk of boneless <laughs> brook trout. That was a good sized fish. Then, beautiful. So with these, we just, where'd that guts go? I wanna see those guts. We're gonna cut these up like potato chips. And you score them really, I don't like his, that much meat on them, but. Try to get them super clean? Yeah, a little bit better than that, but. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put them in there. And throw them in the pan? Yeah. Or oil? In oil. Yeah. But, and you can use starch. 
starch gets them crispier. Oh, you know, really? Starch in like cornstarch or yep, something? Yeah, cornstarch. That's what well, that's what cornstarch does. So look at all those little potato chips right there, mm -hmm. or skin chips. What they do, they do it with salmon. They do it with salmon. Don't do the cusk. Cause oh, is that what that is? No, no, I don't know. That's a trout. Oh yeah, that's still a trout. Yeah. You don't want to do the cusk though. Because the cusk has got like dirt that comes off the skin like way after it's dead. What? All right, we got all the hooks out. We're going to, guys, we're going to feed these to the fox. We got a local fox that's uh, been kind of poking around camp. We see the tracks in the snow. He got pretty close to it, so he's hungry. So why not? We're going to give him the remains. But there were some hooks in those fish. We made sure we got the hooks out first because that's an awful thing to do to anything. So we got us some skin, skin chips. Dudley's showing me how they do it when they cut fish all the time. I've never had skin chips. I've eaten skin on trout and smelt before. Just cooking them all kind of whole, just gutted. But this is pretty exciting to have skin chips. Get all nice and crispy. And here we go. Got us a little... There we go. Looks good. <laughs> Looks good, buddy. I'm getting hungry already. I know it. So we got cusk, brook trout, whitefish. We're going to let you guys know which are the best. Those are great fillets for brook trout. Chips, and then this is just junk, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in the junk pile. Pretty darn good. Who's got a funny game warden story? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got, uh, we all got them. Funny which I, way. I love listening to game of <laughs> I got a bunch. They're brilliant. Because obviously if you put bait out, you got bait coming right Oh, back. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Now in North Carolina, you can bait. And yeah, all they yeah. do is go to, all, all they do is run every camera in the morning and figure out which one they want Just to like turn Maine. on. Just like Maine. That's what yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Fresh, fresh, these tactic cams and stuff have changed it all. I mean, like, them guides wake up in the morning and say, oh, geez, we got a nice boar at, you know, four yep. o'clock this morning, game on. Yep. Yep. Saves a lot of gas and running around though, and you know mm. what I mean. You don't have to tend you like. We run some baits for our buddy out buddies out in Ohio that come hunt with us, whatever. And if that bait, ain't, you might be on a four, three or four day rotation. But if it ain't been hit, you ain't got no pitches. There ain't no need to waste your gas nope. to go do nope. it. You know. I tell you, who put me in my place about baiting. Now this is ten years ago. I was like, eh, baiting. That's really not hunt. Blah 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 blah. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. He smoked my butt. Mm -hmm. And everybody who watched the show's butt. Ted's there, he's got his big box hands. He's he's going throwing the corn out. Like it looks like the yellow brick road mounted <laughs> up the corn. Perfect. Ted Nugent looks at the at the, the at the camera and goes, I know what all of y'all are thinking. Including me. You think this is not bait? He are that you think it's wrong not bait. He said, I ain't got but one thing to say to y'all. He said, if any of y'all have ever put a worm or a minnow on your hook, you ain't got room to talk. And I went, hmm. Hmm. smoke me. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, all right, let's hunt over yeah. bait then. Yeah. It really did change yeah. my mind when he said it that way. And I'll throw bait where I want to throw bait at. And he said, all you guys that hunt over white oak trees and when the acorns are dropping and all that food is below the ground and you're setting your stand up on that, you ain't got room to, I mean, he was going off and I was like, just, oh yeah, that's, okay, all right, let's bait. Throw me some corn down. I'll hunt over it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's well, the one. Way more ethical shots, everything. Like but he put me in my place. But so now my You can't mean. You uh, can't deer hunt over bait. Can you guys bait deer? No. Not in Virginia. Because but you can, of the dog, blue tongue. you can dog hunt deer. Oh, yeah. We dog They dog hunt the dog. Oh, that'd be. That, that's well, where you wow. from. My re yeah. Our record is 63 deer by 3 o'clock in one day. Oh, let's <laughs> go. 63. We had that's, 63 that's on the That's Washington County's ground. total last let's year. Let's do that. It was a peanut plantation right. damage permit. You know, it, it was all legal. It really was. It was all legal. We had 150, and the actual farmer came out there, and he said, if a deer runs by you, and you don't shoot, he don't says, you're, back. Yeah, he said, you're never welcome back. Yeah, he said, you're never welcome back. You're never welcome back here again. I was. We were hunting one day. And uh, that it's like a little, it's basically an island, and they deer always get on it. And so we killed 31 one year and 31 another year. So we were going around picking up all the deer in the boat, and I look, and here comes two nanny goats swimming off. What do you mean I nanny goat? Do does. Oh, I call them <laughs> nanny goats. Two does come, sw <laughs> they were swimming off. I said, Jacob, I said, go on over there, do them. 
He pulls up there beside him, and as soon as he got close, I reached out. I said, Kroosh. He said, Dudley, do not put that deer in the boat. And I'm <laughs> holding the nanny like this. She's going, eh. <laughs> she's going like this, and the mama done turned. He's like, do not put that in the boat. Now we're all laughing our butt off. So I just drop it back. Mama done turned in. So this one gets up and it starts swimming back. Mama makes it to shore. We done stop the boat. We're just giggling, watching. Mama gets up, shakes off, and she goes. Ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> so anyway, we was on a deer drive out there. And, and you know what? Some of the lamb, our lamb deer out there, what we call, what would he Lamb, nanny goats. Huh? Nanny goats. Little baby lamb. Nanny goats. Nanny goats. Yeah. <laughs> 40 pounds, 30 yeah. down, down there. Well, we're on a deer drive in this poor little Only lamb. Only three of you, right? Huh? <laughs> Only three of you, right? Oh, no. There was so plenty of us. We were <laughs> out in Ohio. Oh, you were in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were in Maine. <laughs> and our buddy we had with out in Ohio, him and his buddy was on the high ground. Jesse was in the low ground. <laughs> That deer took off and there's like a, on the property line, you know, page wire or whatever, farm fence. And that deer went right through that page wire fence and, and got stuck. And that thing was just struggling, you know what I mean? So Bobby and Jeb go over and they're, one of them's hanging on to this deer and the other one's trying to get his head out back out through the page wire. They wrestled this deer out let the thing go the thing just kind of looked at him and it walked down over the hill and to do to do boom jesse shot it dead in hell <laughs> yeah, yeah. he comes up over the hill he had that just like a jackrabbit over his shoulder and i'm always like i knew you weren't gonna let that go jesse my secret mix i like a secret mix all right we got dudley's secret mix he said something about black and Old Bay. I know in Maine we'd never even heard of Old this Bay. One. I would have never heard about it too, other than oh, I went to the scrap shack. Uh, to the right's off. You want an offer? Yeah, that's off. My secret mix. This right here. Joe, I'd have to hurt you. I mean, I, it, don't ask me what's in I here. I won't even ask. Don't, don't ask. I'd have to hurt <laughs> you. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's when smelling you're... good. I know that. Mm. That's quite a mix in the pan. We got cusk, we got whitefish, and we got some, some brook trout in there. Mm. Getting a nice, good sear on them in the pan. This would be my first time eating, what is it called? Cusk? Yeah. C-U-S-K. Look at that. Would you look a bear? Would you look a bear, Joe? Just look at it. What you look of air? Yes, sir. That, that's definitely a piece of cusk. Much good. Well, oh, that is good. We getting ready to eat what they call skin chips. So it's like potato chips, but it's the skin of whatever fish you, <coughs> salmon chips are pretty common items. So basically, as you can tell, this is the skin off of the uh, trout that we caught. That was we're a band-aid. We're going to, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to season these up just like you would a potato chip. Put them in very hot oil, sear them, get them crispy, and you actually get a lot of flavor, of course, with the skin. So, And you scaled them, too. Yep, scaled them. Yep, scale them. So we're going to dry them up a little bit. We don't, I don't like to put, you want, you don't want a lot of moisture going into oil when you throw them in there. You want them to be pretty dry. So all I'm doing right now is putting these out right now. I'm going to dry them up and create our fish chips getting them dry now we're going to season season them up and you want to you want to go pretty heavy on the seasoning because when you put them in there uh a, more than half the seasoning will fa fall off and it doesn't take long to cook them i like to use grapeseed oil Grapeseed oil is a higher temperature and it's a sweeter, uh, 
it's a sweeter oil it's one of the highest temperatures you can cook but you can use whatever oils you want we got it at a high temperature for sure <laughs> that thing cooks so hot man it does you can go on the other side it's a little easier to adjust on the other side let's see how it does without cornstarch because I got that Louisiana seasoning that's probably most of the cornstarch. I probably didn't cook that one long enough. Oh wow. Shoot, that might be better than the fish. I know. It's good, ain't it? All right, guys. That is going to do it for tonight. We are in bed cozy up. Not to each other, to our sleeping bags. David's over there. Sorry, bud. <laughs> a little less light. He's trying out the new brown and sleeping bag. He's gonna let us know first thing in the morning if it's any good. I'm over here in my in mine, my old Cabela's. I know this one's good. We're in the teens. It's getting pretty chilly out there. It's clearing up. Had an awesome day. Awesome day picking them up down Bangor, and we had a great ride up. Got to see some deer. Got to see some lynx which are pretty close to endangered. They're on the federally threatened list and got really close to lynx. And then David got to meet the boys and we got to hang out a little bit. We went over and hung out tonight, told some stories, heard some stories, had a great time and came back and ate some fish. So all in all, great day. Tomorrow we're going to fish local to here on the Chamberlain chain and see if we can get a couple of native brook trout topside. And we'll go from there. Thanks for tuning in guys. See you tomorrow.